Hello and welcome to Mickeyology, where we take Disney movies a little too seriously. I'm Austin Rathall, and today we are comparing Disney's two movie versions of Pinocchio with the original book. Disney first adapted Pinocchio into a movie in 1940, and it was their second animated feature ever. They released a live-action slash CGI remake in 2022. Both versions are based on an 1883 novel by Italian author Carlo Collodi, and it was called The Adventures of Pinocchio, Story of a Puppet. There are several different English translations of Pinocchio out there. I'll be referring to the 1916 translation from Whitman Publishing. So, how do the three versions of Pinocchio compare to each other? Well, one version is significantly weirder than the others. Much, much weirder. Format. Disney's 1940 version of Pinocchio was a theatrically released animated musical film. The 2022 version is a live action slash CGI animated film that was released exclusively to streaming. The novel, on the other hand, is actually the novelized version of a newspaper serial that Carlo Collodi wrote for a children's newspaper in 1881. If Collodi had his way, Pinocchio would have been about half as long as it ended up being. After he published what he intended to be the series' last installment, his publishers told him to continue writing, and he went on to create what would become the second half of Pinocchio. In 1883, after the series was complete, he put the whole thing together and published it as a novel. Characters Most of the characters in the Disney versions of Pinocchio are also in the original novel. The characters that appear in all three versions include Pinocchio, Geppetto, a talking cricket, a fairy, a puppet master, a devious fox and cat, a coachman, Pinocchio's misguided friend, and a sea monster. However, Disney changed many of the characters' names, and in some cases gave unnamed characters names for the first time. For example, the talking cricket is unnamed in the book, but Disney gave him the name Jiminy. The puppet master was named Fire Eater in the book, but Stromboli in the movies. The devious fox and cat were unnamed in the book, but called Honest John and Gideon in the movies and Pinocchio's misguided friend is called Candlewick in the book and Lampwick in the movies. Finally, the sea monster, known as Monstro in the movies, originally had the name Attila. Disney also changed several characters' personalities and backstories. Disney's Geppetto is a patient woodcarver who wishes for a son. The book's Geppetto is a poor, hot-tempered man who becomes Pinocchio's father by accident. Jiminy Cricket is an optimistic, encouraging friend to Pinocchio. The book's talking cricket is an aloof voice of warning who rarely interacts with Pinocchio. Disney's puppet master, Stromboli, is a greedy, sinister man, while the book's puppet master, Fire Eater, is a stern and stubborn, but ultimately merciful man. Disney's Honest John and Gideon have pretty much the same personalities in the book, but in the book, the fox pretends to be lame and the cat pretends to be blind. Disney's Blue Fairy is a goddess-like being who sets Pinocchio on his quest to become a real boy. The book's Blue-Haired Fairy does the same thing, but she is a shape-shifting ghost. Disney's sea monster Monstro is a whale in the 1940 film and a whale-ish tentacled sea monster in the 2022 film. The book's sea monster Attila is a giant dogfish, a species of shark. Disney's Pinocchio has little in common with the character from the book. Disney's Pinocchio is a wide-eyed, innocent kid who often makes bad decisions, but he's kind to others and loves his father above all else. In the book, Pinocchio is mean, lazy, and selfish. He makes bad decisions and is unkind to others, and it takes him a while to love anyone but himself. Disney added several original characters to their Pinocchio films, too. Geppetto's cat, Figaro, and his fish, Cleo, are both Disney creations. The live-action version also adds Fabiana the puppeteer and her puppet Sabina. The novel, meanwhile, features many characters that don't appear in either of the Disney films. There are too many to name in this video, but some of the most important are the snake with a smoking tail, the snail that works for the fairy, a circus master, and a green-skinned fisherman. Plot The plots of the two Disney versions of Pinocchio are virtually identical. A woodcarver named Geppetto wishes on a star for his puppet, Pinocchio, to become a real boy. 
the Blue Fairy grants his wish, appoints Jiminy Cricket to be Pinocchio's conscience, and sets Pinocchio on a quest to prove himself brave, truthful, and unselfish, so that one day he can become a real boy. After many misadventures, including a trip into the belly of a whale, Pinocchio fulfills his quest. The plot of the book, on the other hand, is much more surreal and grim. It's one of those stories where something really strange will happen, but none of the characters acknowledge how weird it is. It has a tone that's similar to Alice in Wonderland, and I'm really not surprised that Guillermo del Toro chose to adapt this story and make a film version of his own. So, with that in mind, here is a shortened version of the plot of Pinocchio. A carpenter called Cherry tries to carve a hunk of wood into a table leg and discovers the wood can talk and laugh like a child. Cherry gives the hunk of wood to a man named Geppetto, who takes it home and carves it into a puppet. He calls him Pinocchio after a family he once knew. When he carves the nose, it begins to grow, and Geppetto struggles to cut it down to size. Geppetto finishes Pinocchio, puts him on the floor, and teaches him to walk. Pinocchio immediately then runs away into the street, and Geppetto chases him. A soldier catches Pinocchio by the nose and gives him back to Geppetto, who says he's going to punish the naughty puppet. When the people nearby see this, they pity Pinocchio and think if Geppetto takes Pinocchio home, he might kill him. So the soldier arrests Geppetto and takes him away. Pinocchio goes back to Geppetto's house and meets a talking cricket who tells him not to run away from home. He says Pinocchio should go to school and learn a trade. Pinocchio doesn't like this and becomes angry. He grabs a hammer and throws it at the cricket, killing him. That's right, kids. In the original story, Pinocchio kills Jiminy. Pinocchio falls asleep with his feet on a brazier full of embers, and while he's sleeping, his feet burn off. Geppetto arrives back home, feeds Pinocchio, and makes him new feet. Pinocchio agrees to go to school in exchange for the new feet Geppetto's made for him. However, Pinocchio has no spelling book, so Geppetto sells his only coat and buys one for him. On his way to school, Pinocchio is sidetracked by a puppet show and sells his spelling book for the price of admission. The puppets on stage immediately recognize their brother Pinocchio and call him by name and cheer for him. Even though he's never met them before, Pinocchio gets on stage and embraces them all. The showman then comes out and asks why Pinocchio is disturbing the theater. He grabs Pinocchio and after the show, he orders the other puppets to burn him so he can roast his dinner. Pinocchio pleads for his life and Fire Eater, the showman, takes pity on Pinocchio and orders another puppet, Harlequin, to be burned instead. Pinocchio pleads on Harlequin's behalf and offers to die in Harlequin's place. At last, Fire Eater relents and says he won't burn Harlequin either. Pinocchio tells Fire Eater about Geppetto and the spelling book, and Fire Eater gives Pinocchio five gold pieces to take home to his father. Pinocchio heads home when a fox and a cat stop him on the road. They find out about his gold pieces and offer to help Pinocchio double his money. They say he can bury his money at a place called the Field of Miracles where it will grow into a money tree. Pinocchio believes them and agrees to follow them. The three of them stop at the Inn of the Red Crawfish to eat, but the fox and the cat abandon Pinocchio and leave him to pay the bill. Pinocchio pays the bill and leaves. On the road, he meets the ghost of the talking cricket, who tells him not to believe the fox and cat and to go home to Geppetto, who's worried about him. Pinocchio doesn't listen and goes on his way. Soon, two figures dressed in charcoal sacks attack Pinocchio and threaten to kill him if he doesn't hand over his money. Pinocchio pops his money into his mouth and refuses to hand it over. When the robbers try to pry his mouth open with a knife, Pinocchio bites one of their hands off, which turns out to be a cat's paw. Pinocchio breaks free and runs. He finds a house in the woods and knocks on the door. A girl with blue hair appears at the window. She says no one can answer because everyone in the house is dead. Pinocchio asks why she won't open the door and she says she's dead too. The muggers arrive and hang Pinocchio from a tree and leave him to die. The chapter ends by saying his breath failed him and he could say no more. He shut his eyes, opened his mouth, stretched his legs, gave a long shudder, and hung, stiff and insensible. And that is where Collodi wanted the story to end. That was the end of the last chapter. Hey kids, go to school and listen to your parents, otherwise you might be hanged. Thanks to his publishers, there's more to the story. As Pinocchio dangles from the tree, the blue-haired child summons some animals to bring him to her. 
Soon Pinocchio is lying inside the fairy's house. Yeah, she's a fairy now, for some reason. And the fairy summons a crow, an owl, and the talking cricket. Is the talking cricket still a ghost? Is he alive again? I don't know. The fairy asks them all whether Pinocchio is alive, but none of them can tell. Then Pinocchio opens his eyes and proves he is alive after all. The fairy asks Pinocchio where his money is, and he says he lost it, even though it's really in his pocket. Suddenly, his long nose begins to grow. He continues lying, and his nose continues growing, until he can't move in any direction. The fairy laughs at him, and then summons a thousand woodpeckers, who peck Pinocchio's nose back down to normal size. A pigeon finds him, and tells him Geppetto has been looking everywhere for him. The bird says Geppetto is now at the seashore and intends to sail to the new world to continue his search. The bird gives Pinocchio a ride to the seashore, and when they arrive, Geppetto is already out on the sea, and there's a tempest brewing. As Pinocchio watches, Geppetto's boat goes under the water and doesn't resurface. Pinocchio jumps into the ocean to save his father. Pinocchio swims all night and eventually washes up on shore without finding his father. A kind woman convinces him to carry a water can for her in exchange for food. Pinocchio does so, and when he arrives at her home, he recognizes her as the fairy from before. The fairy is somehow not dead, and has also somehow aged to be a full-grown woman. Pinocchio says he wants to grow too, and that he's tired of being a puppet. The fairy says Pinocchio can become human if he learns to be a good boy. She tells him he must go to school, and he agrees to go. Pinocchio has several misadventures, including an episode in which a green-skinned fisherman in a cave almost eats him, but eventually he behaves himself long enough that the fairy promises him the next day he'll become a real boy. She plans a party for him to celebrate, and all his schoolmates are to be invited. Pinocchio goes to town and invites all his friends to his breakfast party, but he can't find his friend Candlewick, the naughtiest boy in school. Finally, he finds Candlewick sitting on a porch, waiting to start his journey to what Disney would call Pleasure Island, but in the book it is called The Land of Boobies. In this land, there is no school and no schoolmasters. Candlewick tempts Pinocchio into going with him to this land, and then a carriage arrives pulled by many donkeys that carries them there. They arrive in the land of boobies, where young boys are playing and seeing shows all day. Pinocchio spends five months there, until one day he notices that his ears have grown. He asks a marmot what is happening, and the marmot tells him that he has donkey fever, which is what happens to lazy boys who dislike school and pass their time in amusement. He tells Pinocchio that in a few hours he'll have completely transformed into a donkey. Pinocchio finds Candlewick and discovers he has donkey fever too. Soon, both of them have completely transformed into donkeys. The coachman sells Donkey Candlewick and Donkey Pinocchio to two different owners. He sells Pinocchio to a circus master, who forces Pinocchio to perform for a crowd. During his first performance, Pinocchio spots the fairy in the audience, but she soon vanishes. Pinocchio injures himself during the show and becomes lame, so the circus master sells him to a man who wants to skin him to make a drum. The man ties a cord to Pinocchio and throws him into the sea, then waits for him to drown. The fairy sends a school of fish to Pinocchio, and they eat the donkey layer off his body, leaving him a puppet again. The man draws Pinocchio out of the sea and is astonished to find a puppet on the end of his rope. The man wants his money's worth out of Pinocchio, so he says he'll sell Pinocchio as firewood. Pinocchio leaps into the sea and escapes. As he swims, the great dogfish appears and swallows him. Inside the dogfish, Pinocchio meets and chats with a tuna. Then Pinocchio sees a light. He follows it and finds Geppetto eating at a table by candlelight. Geppetto explains that right after the dogfish swallowed him, it swallowed a merchant vessel laden with supplies. Geppetto's been living on those supplies for two years, but he's now down to the last of his resources. Pinocchio urges Geppetto to escape, but Geppetto says he can't swim. Pinocchio can swim, and he says he can carry Geppetto to shore. The dogfish sleeps with its mouth open due to its asthma, so Pinocchio and Geppetto leap out of the fish's mouth into the sea. Pinocchio exhausts himself swimming to shore, but luckily the tuna arrives, having followed Pinocchio and Geppetto out of the dogfish's mouth. The tuna takes the two of them to shore. Geppetto is ill and shaking. Once on land, Pinocchio and Geppetto search for shelter and come upon a cottage. 
Inside, they find the talking cricket. The cricket reminds Pinocchio about the incident with the hammer. Pinocchio tells the cricket that if he wishes, he may retaliate and throw a hammer at him and send him away, but asks that he please have pity on Geppetto. The cricket has mercy on both of them and takes them in. Pinocchio goes to work for a nearby gardener in order to support himself and Geppetto. In the gardener's stable, Pinocchio finds a donkey, who reveals himself to be Candlewick. Candlewick then dies right before Pinocchio's eyes. Eventually, Pinocchio earns enough money to buy himself a new coat. But then he hears that the blue-haired fairy is in the hospital. Pinocchio immediately gets to work earning money to help support the fairy, just as he supports Geppetto. After a long day of work, Pinocchio falls asleep, and he dreams that the fairy appears to him and forgives him for his many wrongs. When he wakes up, he finds his house has transformed. New clothes are waiting for him, and there's a purse with 50 gold pieces and a note from the fairy thanking him for his good heart. Geppetto has returned to health, and best of all, Pinocchio finds that he's been transformed into a real human boy. Easter Eggs and Connections while the Disney films tell a trimmed-down, sanitized version of Pinocchio, they contain several interesting Easter eggs that connect them to the original story. Disney's fairy character is called the Blue Fairy, a reference to the blue-haired fairy from the book. In the animated film, Pinocchio sets his finger on fire. He does this in the live-action version, too, and also sets his feet on fire twice. This is similar to the way Pinocchio burns his feet off in the original. Disney's Pinocchio goes on stage during Stromboli's puppet show, just as he does in Fire Eater's puppet show in the book. And while Stromboli is more sinister than Fire Eater, they both threaten to use Pinocchio as firewood. Fabiana, the puppeteer from the live-action film, is a sort of stand-in for the blue-haired fairy from the book. Both of them act as surrogate sisters to Pinocchio, and they both take on different forms. The blue-haired fairy in the book appears as a little girl, a woman, and at one point she even appears as a goat. Fabiana, meanwhile, takes on the form of Sabina, this puppet that she uses to talk to Pinocchio. Sabina is also similar to Harlequin and the other sentient puppets from the book, although in the movie we, the audience, know that she's not really alive. She just appears to be alive to Pinocchio. Honest John and Gideon are obviously based on the fox and cat from the original book, and as in the book, they're not above killing to make some money. In the animated film, we see Honest John and Gideon stop by the Red Lobster Inn, which gets its name from the Inn of the Red Crawfish in the book. In the animated version, when Honest John and Gideon meet Pinocchio the second time, they also pretend to be doctors, which may be a callback to those useless animal doctors from the book. In the live-action movie, Jiminy Cricket hitches a ride on a bird's back. This is similar to the way Pinocchio hitches a ride on a bird's back to reach the seashore in the book. In the movie, after the children of Pleasure Island turn to donkeys, we see some of them locked in crates labeled Sold to the Circus. This is a nod to Pinocchio being sold to a circus in the book. The live-action film has Pinocchio jump into the sea to escape the coachman, just like how Pinocchio jumps into the sea to escape the drum maker in the book. In the live-action film, Pinocchio sees Geppetto floating on his boat atop the ocean before he goes under. The same thing happens in the book, although in the book, Pinocchio witnesses this happen from the safety of land. In the animated film, Pinocchio enters Monstro's mouth alongside a school of tuna. This may be a nod to the tuna from the book, who meets Pinocchio in the belly of the fish and later takes him and Geppetto to shore. Both the animated and live-action films show a ship inside Monstro's belly. This is clearly based on the merchant vessel that Attila the dogfish swallows in the book. When Pinocchio reunites with Geppetto in the live-action film, he rattles off this lengthy recap of all the adventures that he's had. Pinocchio does the same thing in the book. Finally, in both versions, Pinocchio heads for a cave among the rocks to escape Monstro. This cave looks very similar to the cave of the green-skinned fisherman that Collodi describes in the book. Final Thoughts I found reading Pinocchio a bewildering experience. It's no secret that Disney sanitizes the stories that they adapt, but I still was not prepared for just how bizarre and grim this book was going to be, or how long it was going to be. This is a 200 plus page novel. There are a lot of strange and bizarre things that happen in this book, more than I could ever fit into this video, and I 
didn't have one single chapter where I didn't find myself confused and put off by some strange twist that the plot had taken. However, as I got to the last chapter, I suddenly found myself really liking the book. I'm not sure exactly why that is, but I think it might be because after following Pinocchio through so many awful and bizarre ordeals, that the happy ending feels very earned. This book requires a steep price for both Pinocchio and the reader, and by paying that price, I think the ending feels that much richer. Pinocchio is also very ripe for interpretation. At times, I could see this as a sort of Christian allegory or social commentary, and you could probably take it in a dozen other directions. So, would I recommend that you read Pinocchio? Yes and no. I personally would never read this book again for entertainment, at least. It's just too weird for my taste. Maybe you think differently and would enjoy this kind of thing. However, I can't deny that it is a very meaningful story, and maybe it's that meaning that has prompted so many different people to adapt it so many different times over the years. So that is my comparison of the Disney versions of Pinocchio with the original novel. Please let me know in the comments if you have read Pinocchio before or if you are planning to read it and which version of the story you like best. Also, don't forget to let me know which Disney movie you would like me to compare with its source material next. This video came about because of a comment on a previous video, so I do listen to those comments and videos do come out of them. Please also like this video, subscribe to the channel, and follow me on social media. But most of all, as always, thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.